What's up everybody? Sorry about the echoiness, but we're in the garage obviously. So yeah, I was about to build some battles on this terrain, uh, and I built them, and then I started painting them, and then I remembered that there are people that asked me how I paint my uh, stuff. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is uh, to actually paint Battle Zone scenery from Mantic. I think it's rebranded as Terrain Crate now. So yeah, the sci-fi stuff. Um, I built some stuff uh, and I've primed it black with my favorite primer. I'll show you in a second. Um, but yeah, it's super, super easy to make some good looking terrain really, really quickly. Um, obviously, I've gone on before and said how much I love this awesome... Uh, it's, it's basically Legos and I've always loved Legos and Bionicles and all that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, it's basically just Legos for war gamers, so it's it's awesome. Uh, and so basically, all the stuff I have today is uh, a mix between all of my bits and uh, Johnny P of Mant of old Mantic fame. Uh, he gave me all his extra bits, and so this is kind of what I scrounged up between the two of our collections um, in terms of like foolish buildings. There's tons of extras that I haven't even gone through yet, but. Yeah, um, so this will just be a quick little terrain kind of video. I'll just show you how I do my um, battle zones because it's super easy and hopefully you guys will like it. And uh, if you want to, this is how you knock out terrain super quick. So um, let's go to the actual stuff now. Okay, so you guys might hear some extra noise coming from inside, just ignore that. But um, all right, so I'll kind of show you the stuff I use uh, first off and then um, I'll just show you how quickly it is to do it. So. This is my favorite primer in the whole world. <laughs> uh, it costs virtually nothing. It's a, a dollar per can. This is at the very bottom shelf of any uh, Home Depot. That's where I usually go. Um, I always get the flat one. The shiny one is just too shiny. So yeah, I get the, the flat black one, and this stuff is awesome. Uh, I, I prime models with it too, and it works great. Uh, it keeps all the detail. It's not thick. It's just it's excellent stuff. So this is my preferred can for all purposes of priming, unless it's uh, any other color. So if it's black, I spray it with this. If it's anything else, um, I usually spring for better stuff, uh, especially for miniatures. But this is how I do my train, so cheap is better. So speaking of cheap, you'll notice that this is Oops Paint. So the Oops Paint section is my favorite because you go to Home Depot and there's people who, you know, they think, oh, I want to paint my wall this certain color. And then they get, uh, they, they see the color in person, then they go, ooh, yeah, that's not what I wanted. But that's awesome for me because it costs, if you notice here, 50 cents. And this will cover easily a six by four board worth of uh, gray. So yeah, this stuff is dirt cheap. You don't always get the perfect color. So I actually mixed a little bit of black paint. Again, also super cheap. I just mixed some black paint in with this. And then, um, just to get the right color of gray. Sometimes you get really lucky and just get the perfect color of oops paint. I've had that happen too. But yeah, this stuff is awesome. And again, 50 cents. So paint cost so far is at like $1.50. <laughs> and then if you want to go for the extra step, you get some sort of cheap acrylic, which is usually less than a dollar. So we'll just call it a dollar. So for $2.50, you can paint all this terrain and then um, just get accent colors. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But yeah, so that the base of it, and this is all just gonna be dry brushed. This is the cheapest, worst brush I could find because these are usually the best for br dry brushing. They're just terrible brushes that are expendable and terrible. So again, um, I'm all about being super cheap because I'm uh, super cheap. So yeah, uh, let's just jump into how I actually do the dry brushing because it's also easy. You'll notice I'm on a pizza box because why not, you know? So uh, here we go, here's the actual dry brushing bit. Um, I'll show you how quickly it is to paint up a quick cube and uh, then I'll just time lapse the rest of it. So, And this is like the easiest possible thing you can do. So you just want to get your brush to the point where it has very little paint on it and then you just kind of beat it up on your terrain. <laughs> and, uh, and the cool thing about the, the Battle Zones terrain is that you can you can do this initial step and have it look fine, and then you can always add on more uh, concepts and ideas as you go along. And because these because these pieces are, are both super easy, but also have quite a bit of detail, you can get as detailed as you want with these. I mean, there's some people that have made the the ruins and stuff with like glowing red edges, like it just got blown up, or you know, like magma hit it or something like that. So. 
Uh, the sky's the limit, but this is how I do like the bases of all of my stuff. And then I'll show you how I do all the, the accents and the colors and whatnot. But, I mean, this isn't anything that you guys probably haven't seen before, but uh, I just want to show you how, how good it looks for how easy it is, you know? Um, and how fast it is. Like, you can do, like I said, a 6x4 terrain table in basically no time at all. And this, this is a good technique for really any kind of terrain, but I, I've found it works perfectly with the battle zone stuff. And as you can see, I'm just being really kind of violent with it because I really don't care. It just needs to pick up all the detail and then just kind of have that grayish color, which I find works really great for dead zones. Um, all my terrain is, is made to look like it fits with each other, just because I like to have different setups, and I think it's... It's kind of the same principle as like if you base your guys with snow or something and then they're fighting in green grassy fields all the time. I find it is kind of strange, so I always just make a generic gray looking building. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's literally it. That's, that's the first step. If you wanted to stop right there, that's perfectly fine because it'll, it'll get the job done and um, just that minimal amount of effort will go a long way. Before I do the time lapse, I just want to show you uh, just kind of what I was going for. It, it's super easy and it seems like I'm talking way too much for how easy this actually is, so uh, bear with me here. But yeah, it, you just want to pick up detail and pick up those little nuances of the terrain. All these little bits and bobs come to life once you dry brush it. And um, like I said, this method is all about being cheap and easy and fast. So um, here's, let's go super speed. My next step is going to be putting on the lines. So this is, again, some oops paint, I believe. Um, this is a cool, bright, bluish color, which I think is going to be really cool for my stripes. Uh, it's different from anything I've done before, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then I'll show you how to tape it up right now. So just as you would paint a test miniature to before you paint the whole army, um, I just painted up a barricade um, just to see what it looks like on there. And I really like it. It actually kind of looks like my Maison Labs guys, so I'm going to stick with this color. I like it a lot. We'll go back to the original piece of terrain that I was showing you before. And uh, one of the tricks and one of the coolest things about Battle Zones is that they have all the little connector areas. And so the connector areas are perfect for knowing exactly how to make a straight line because they're going to be in the same spot on every single piece. So what's really cool about this is you can just line up the tape see if I can do this while straddling this camera. <laughs> so yeah, let's see. I always line up the tape with the holes on the battle zone's terrain. And so if they're all lined up, you know it's going to be straight like that. And then I press in the edges. And so I'll have a straight blue line now, uh, basically from right there. Like I said, none of this stuff is like revolutionary. Like none of this is stuff you haven't heard before probably, but this is just how I do it. And um, yeah. Then get a good amount of paint on the paintbrush because you want this to be uh, not like a dry brush. You just want this to be on there. So, and like I said, I'll probably go over the rebar again um, really quick, but. So there's the blue line, and then this is a, a good painting tip for any sort of painting, even if you're painting a wall at your house uh, or anything like that. Peel off the tape while it's wet, because if it dries on there, you're going to get way more chips and lines. Um, the good thing about my Battle Zones terrain is that I kind of like it messy. I don't want it to look perfect, so uh, I don't mind things like that, but I do like when it comes out nice and clean like that, too. Um, if I were really OCD, I'd go in there and, and fix it up. but. Um, like I said, it's all about being quick and then kind of doing that. So 
Um, that's pretty much the basics of how I do the lining. It's, it's really simple. You just get the painter's tape with the straight edge on it and then just line it up with the, with the connector areas. So um, that's it. And then I'll show you the, kind of the, the finished collection at the end. And uh, the cool thing about that is you can do different styles on the various uh, different kinds of plates and things. Like on this, sometimes I don't like big wide uh, stripes. So sometimes I'll just do a stripe between the connectors, just have that really thin stripe. Uh, some of that's on my, my big industrial zone uh, terrain piece. So that's the basics of it, guys. So um, there's only one more step to go, and that's the dry brushing of the dirt effect, which is as easy as it sounds. It's literally just dry brushing a nice brown color onto something. So that's the basics of how I do my terrain, and uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. And here is the whole setup. This is all of my battle zones at the current moment, what I have built and painted and ready to roll. Uh, I set it all up because I decided to make a big fort. Then I thought it looked like it needed miniatures on it, and then I went all out because, um, well, because I did. So yeah, I, I decided to go all out with my GCPS and my plague, kind of telling a little diorama story, but uh, the focus of this is supposed to be on the terrain. So as you can see, I decided to kind of pick and choose little spots of blue to make the fortification parts uh, kind of pop, you know? Um, decided it's a little bit different, and none of this is actually done. I just got really excited and then couldn't help myself. <laughs> Once I started building the giant fort. Um, yeah, this is something I kind of pictured in my head for a long time that I just finally did. And I'm really happy I did. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just uh, a lot of fun getting all the toys on the table. Obviously, a, a real game wouldn't look like this. Because the GCPS would get wiped out really quickly. At least in this setup. Uh, this is the piece of terrain. Like I said, it's not done because I haven't gone over the rebar or anything. But this is the one that I showed you in the video. Um, you can see how all of my terrain kind of fits together. It all has a similar gray theme, um, which I find helps so I can make cool setups like this where nothing seems totally out of place just because everything's kind of set up uh, in a certain way. And that way it's all modular. You can stack it and build it and turn it into something fun. So, yeah, I, I got carried away and I'm proud of it. <laughs> um, there you go, guys. That's my quick, cheap, easy way to do Battle Zones terrain, and then a little bonus at the end, just because... Oh, come on, look at that. It's so cool. This actually, uh, I kind of made it in how I pictured the, uh, the end of First Strike a little bit. So you have, like, the big section, and then... I didn't do the Veermen on this, just because uh, my GCPS are blue, and so are my Veermen. I didn't want to wash it out, but, you know. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. So, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and in the comments, please let me know how you paint your Battle Zones terrain. I'm curious to find out. I know there's a lot of cool um, techniques and setups and things like that. So just, uh, yeah, let me know. Hope you enjoyed. Um, catch you later. Keep rolling eights.